If we are a product of our upbringing, then high school teacher Oscar Peñaranda is a result of different worlds. Born in Leyte, Philippines, he immigrated with his family to Canada at the age of five. At age 17, he moved to the United States and made it his permanent home. I lived in the avenues, the avenues of San Francisco, the uh, Richmond district. So there were some Filipinos there, so I, I sort of hung around with them, but I also hung around with some Filipinos in the Mission and some in the uh, J-Town district. I went to school in St. Ignatius. I had to catch up with some studies. In Canada, I had to study and take Canadian history. Now I had to take study and, and take American history. Missing from the books he was studying was his people's story. It was during his high school days working as a laborer that he noticed the immigrant's version wasn't being told. And when I was reading and writing and I was working in the farms and during the summer, I knew a lot of Filipino workers who, who were great characters and great people, great fathers and great mothers, but you never hear about them because they're low class. They only work in the hotels, even until now. So then the, the, my uh, writing about my heritage began, began to be delineated around that time. So when I started teaching already, it, be, it uh, sharpened more my awareness of the, the Philippines and Filipino-Americans and uh, how it is living in a multicultural society. Had no voice to tell their story. So there was, I would come home to school and, and see all these people studying all kinds of stuff, but they, they never studied the, the poorer people. And those are the people, the, the manual laborers, the carpenters, the, the, the farmers. And those are the people that really gave us uh, gave us life, you know, gave us the food. They themselves could not afford the food. So all that stuff started coming into my head and so I figured I was writing. So I thought I was going to write so that people will hear their story. Oscar wanted to impart the message as a writer. Becoming a teacher was something he constantly resisted. Well, my mother was a teacher 40 something years, you know. I used to help her correct papers, you know, I used to say to myself, what a lousy job this is, I'll never be this, I'll never be a teacher. So, and for many years I denied that I was a teacher because nobody respects a teacher in society, even now, you know, I mean, they don't really support teachers. They, uh, they like to blame them. They don't want to give them any money so they can do a better job. And then, uh, I don't know, it's just, and they're the butt of a lot of jokes. But like a metal to a magnet, he was always getting pulled back to fulfill his destination. Oscar was a student at San Francisco State University in the turbulent 60s. During this time, SFSU students were fighting for ethnic studies to be included in the college curriculum. It was the uneasiness of this era that he happened chance was led to become a teacher. I got a telegram from one of my friends who, who was a striker and said, do you want a job because you're the only one with a master's degree that can teach, so we don't want to put, now that we got our demands in the strike, we don't want to put anybody there who has no credentials. I was the only one that I knew among the strikers that were, that was uh, straddling both, uh, both worlds, the Filipino Philippines and the Filipino U.S. So I wrote a lot of the courses that are in the books until now. In fact, I'm a little bit disappointed. At SFSU. Yeah, at SFSU. I'm a little bit disappointed that when I left, nobody added on to those courses, you know. So I wrote, and a lot of them are still standing until now in, in SF State. Oscar Peñaranda has been a teacher for 31 years. He currently teaches Tagalog at James Logan High School in Union City, California. During his earlier years at this school, he also helped create and taught the only college accredited high school Filipino heritage studies class in the whole United States. I was noticing the big uh, void that the students had about their own Filipino-ness when I was teaching them Tagalog. Pretty soon I was teaching them not just the language, but the history through the language, you know? I had to sort of take a break and then teach a revolution, the Philippine Revolution, and, then, and I was not teaching as much Tagalog as I could, so I said, I better use another class to use this. Yeah, like you say, I'm disheartened that there's only one in the country, there should be plenty more, because everywhere I go, uh, where there's a lot of Filipino population, they, uh, they like that class. Despite all the challenges, though, Oscar is relentless in his pursuit to teach the younger generation about their story. I'm Filipino, but I was born in America, so I don't know much about my history. So it's kind of like, it's kind of a way to get in touch with my roots. I find 
that it's really important because a lot of kids, especially those who are born here, they have to really force themselves to learn about their heritage and they have to force themselves to learn Tagalog because it, it does deepen your understanding and also your appreciation for it because otherwise you really have nothing. The reluctant teacher who never wanted to be became a beloved and a respected one. Now everywhere he goes, Oscar is always persuading students to become teachers and help in enlightening young minds about the Filipino's story, just like him.